Today I'm looking at AS Programmer 21013. It's a later version of uh, the original one that I looked at, which was a 141. And I downloaded it from a link on uh, YouTube. Now, I wouldn't advise anybody to do the same without being cautious and uh, take all the necessary precautions to ensure that you haven't downloaded a virus. Um, not saying there was any problems with mine, um, I didn't find any. But do be cautious please. It operates exactly the same as the original version, except that it seems to have been forked in development. And it marvellous. Oh dear. It functions exactly as the same as the original. Um, there are a few couple of video synchronies um, brought about by the sort of um, forking in the development of the program. It seems to have ceased with GitHub and has been carried on by a, a more wider community and looks like uh, some Chinese developers have got their hands to it. I'll open it up um, just by clicking on it. Now the first thing you'll find in the folder is that it looks like most of it's written in Chinese. Not surprising there. So, But this folder contains all the files and thankfully it's all in English and AS Programmer is the executable file that we're going to open. Just the same as we did with the 141. Let's close the background down. And here we have it by itself. Let's bring it over here again. The thing that you'll notice most is that it's all in uh, Chinese, which is not much use to us, So, except where it says languages. So let's click on language and change it to English. And as I'm drawing some parallels between this version and uh, 141, I'll go back to my 141 version, open the executable, close the background down, and put both of them side by side. Now, the first thing I notice is that when you go to open a file. Now, with the original version, I open the file, and I can see all the files and folders, etc., on my uh, desktop, which is what I would expect. As I can put any file, uh, digital file, onto an EEPROM, um, I've got the choice with the first one. However, with the later version, I open the file. And lo and behold, the JPEG images that were on my desktop are not there. And clicking on the file selection down here, you've got these options, file, 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 and files. Now, I presume a little bit of work on the program has gone um, undone. And clicking on files, which I presume is going to be all files, we have um, brought up all the files on my desktop. Now we have test, and won't go into those. So, that's a minor point, but uh, one worth considering. We need to uh, load in a chip first. So, detect chip, and the one I've got in is this bottom one, so I've selected it. Select IC, and I shall read it. And read is there. Read I see. Now this takes about a minute and a half and uh, we'll come back when it's done. Alright, that's done. Now if we come back 
over to the 1.41 version and uh, we'll read the IC down here select the chip double click on it that sets all the uh, the uh, prerequisites for the programmer to work and I'm going to read the IC this side I need to do this to so that we can make our comparisons um, it's going to take again about a minute and a half and I will come back Right, I'm back again. Now, over here I'm selecting the uh, what's called the unprotect, but I'm going for the drop down menu that's alongside it, and I'm going to read the S register. Down here are the results of the three S registers. If I come, come over to the uh, same icon here and go to the drop down menu you see there's a little bit of um, tidying up needs to be done because that's Chinese and not English and read the S reg we get the same results right down the bottom so no difference you might think however up here there is an option on the original to set the protection bits and I will set the protection bits and now, uh, down the bottom it tells me the, what the old one was and what the new uh, S register says. But we'll read it in total. So I'll go down to the drop down menu again and read out S registers. And it says uh, you've got a binary number followed by the equivalent hexadecimal number, another binary number followed by a hexadecimal number the equivalent hexadecimal number and uh, binary number again with its equivalent hexadecimal number. In theory I should be able to read that by coming over to here and reading the S register using the, the newer version. However the binary number doesn't match the hexadecimal number in the first register and I'm pleased to see that they actually call them status registers now which is um, S register is a little bit meaningless or could have other implications whereas status register says exactly what it is the uh, binary number here has not changed but hexadecimal number has and is in keeping with the hexadecimal number in the first version. The other two numbers haven't changed at all. So that is a little bit uh, worrying in that it's not showing uh, the same operational feature. Now, it's something you should be aware of, but the thing is, the hexadecimal number is identical. Now, I'm going to minimise this one for a minute, and we're going to focus in on this. Come down here, and we'll edit the S register. Now, when we open the S register, uh, status registers, you'll notice that it is showing it everything as zeros. So we need to read them first and here you can see that the what would represent the binary number there it's all been read in and it's given us 9 series hexadecimal 02 and FF now no problems with that at all uh, we can reset this to its unprotected status just by setting all of these back to uh, uh, zero and we will have to write this yes now I'll close that down and we come back to our drop down menu here read the S register and here you will see that they've all been reset to zero zero well, the first S register, states register, has been set to zero. 
Now, let's try um, altering the first S register. Um, we'll just do a couple of daft things and write that. Oh no, we should read it first. Right, 0002FF. We'll change those to, and we'll write them. Start programming, yes. Now, I'll close it down. And all of this is just to prove my point. That the first status register doesn't change its binary number, but it does change its hexadecimal number. Now, let me try what on earth does that actually say and now it would be nice to actually say it says un unlock or lock or whatever yeah, let's um, click on it and find out and it's taken the oldest register and put in the new one so that's an unlock padlock that works although it needs a bit of tidying up regards to the language. Let's read them. And we are back where we went to its unprotected status. Um, perhaps I've laboured the point a little bit too much, but if you get into uh, protection bits, uh, you can get very confusing at times, but I don't expect many people will ever, get, ever go there. That's all I've got to say uh, really about the differences in the programs um, and why would you want to uh, um, use uh, 21013 in as, as opposed to 141. Um, well, it probably caters for a wider range of chips uh, as they come onto the market and EPROMs are being used in everything. They're all over the place. Everything you take apart these days seems to have an EEPROM in it somewhere. And um, you can't expect the humble CH341A SPI uh, programmer to cater for all, for all the vari variants there are. However, many people out there are modifying um, these, these small little programmers to um, do the job. And here's a nice little part that I like uh, about what I downloaded was that it it's a little folder that says pinouts now the original one for one had a um, a few little schematics in there had four schematics in there and uh, this one has uh, five or six and let me run you through them this first schematic is for I2C24 series connections and um, the next one we'll look at and see what the next one does. Microwire 93CXX connections. This stuff is gold dust to all those who are trying to uh, read EEPROMs and modify uh, their devices to cater for them. And um, close current tab. Oh, I could have left it open, I suppose. SPI 25 series, which is the ones that I'm using at present. And uh, a little bit of extra information down here telling you that the 95 series is, requires 5 volts. Small but significant information that you will need. Um, X that. Let's minimise that. And again, we've got some more information. This is an adapter for your CH341A programmer. And uh, close tab. I'll X that a minute. And our last one, which is for the SPI 45 series. So, useful information. And worth having. I don't need any of this information um, at present. However, it doesn't mean so I won't in the future. 
as I'm always taking things apart and uh, getting more and more curious about the variety of EEPROMs and what they do in equipment because uh, I'm sure that sometime or another in trying to repair them that the uh, this is going to become an essential sort of tool in understanding what's going on.